Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is part one of the new eBay challenge between me, Tronix Fix, Elliot from Retro Future and Paul from Tampa Tech. So there's going to be four of us doing this challenge this time round. It's nice and simple. Each week we're going to buy an item, we're then going to try to repair it and then we're going to sell it hopefully for a profit. Sometimes it might be a loss. Now we're going to be buying from eBay and we've got £200 to spend. You can roll that £200 so if you make a lot of money on one item you might end up buying an item for £300. But we're going to start with £200, you can't spend any more than that and then at the end of it whoever makes the most amount of money wins. So this is week one and this is my first item. So in week one we're doing electronic items before for the year 2000 and this came out in the UK in 1990 so this is the Lynx 1 so uh, let's pop some batteries in and let's see what happens with it right so initial impressions are that it doesn't look great it looks like it's been taken apart already because inside here I can see staining and dust on the actual other side of this screen here which is annoying. Also I can see a hole here and then I looked at the other side and the reason is because a big whopping screw has been put in there not these screws here. Also can you see that these are rusted so that's definitely not a good start so so far I'm not overly overly happy with it. Uh, yeah, I can see a bit of uh, a bit of corrosion in here. Let's pop some batteries in and see what happens. So it takes six AA batteries. And it looks like they all go in just the same way, top and bottom. Right. Oh, that already sounds crunchy. Right, so I think with the rust here, it's safe to say that the battery terminals are probably corroded. That might be why it's uh, not supposed to be powering on. Right, let's turn it on. Actually, it would help if I put a game in. So now, uh, I don't know now, I've never played one of these before, so I'm assuming if there's no game in, it won't do anything. Let's put in Road Blasters, because that is a game that I do remember. Right, it goes in that way. It's lighting up. Oh, I can see. I can see it, but you need to look at an angle. There you go, and sound. Right, so it does work. Volume. Okay, so a bit crackly. Let's check brightness. Yeah, brightness is working. So up to go thingy, left, right. Okay, left's not working. So it's not going left. That's weird, right, so it's not turning off, but yes, it seems like it's still on. So let me uh, zoom in to show you. It makes kind of that weird noise, but look, it's, it's not off, is it? Right, so it's not turning off. So I think the initial thoughts are there might be more, for example, I haven't tested all the buttons, but it's definitely not going left, don't know about down, and it's not turning off. So let's take this thing apart. Maybe I'm thinking like leaking caps or something because it's very old. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna have to just pop the batteries out to get it to turn itself off. Okay, so I've been looking at this for about 20 minutes now and there's a few things I don't like the look of. I've tested all the capacitors. One capacitor looks to be ever so slightly dodgy with the uh, ESR meter, but it's not really, it doesn't look too bad, but there's only one of them that doesn't look quite right. But I have found this little surface mount capacitor here that's very badly corroded. So I found that. I've also found these resistors over here don't look great. Can you see R6 and R4? They kind of look burnt around this area. And the capacitor I'm not sure about is this one here, which is uh, C10. When it comes to the reading, it says it's like good if it's under 24 microfarad, and this particular one is 47 microfarad. So I'm wondering if this has gone ever so slightly out of range. And the only other thing I found is on the leg of this capacitor down here, it just looks a little bit corroded. So on that, uh, on that leg, where is it now? It doesn't look as bad when I zoom in. 
There you go, can you see this corrosion underneath there? So that doesn't look great either. So I've got a few things to work on. I just need to find out if these are anything at all to do with the fact that it's not latching off properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a good clean now with IPA, see if that makes a difference. So I'm just going to clean it with some IPA, that's 99.9% .9 alcohol. While I'm here, I might as well just clean the uh, game carpet as well. I mean, it looks fine, but I might as well give it a might as well give it a bit of clean just in case it's been oxidised over the years. I'm only actually concentrating on the two bits of damage that I've seen because there's no point in cleaning at all because the rest looks immaculate. I'm going to clean the little contacts as well for the on and off switch and also the uh, other buttons as well. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to get a solder iron. I'm just going to take off this capacitor here because it really does look corroded. So I just want to reflow that. I'm just going to have a close look at these resistors. And then once I've done that, I'm going to then just put the batteries back in just to test it, just to see if it is going to make any difference. use this cheap old thing to take the capacitor off and now I'm just going to clean up the pads underneath it. Because if you have a look at that bottom one you can see how corroded it is. This one here. So I'm just going to get a fiberglass pen and clean that up a little bit. Okay, so it looks like uh, I've managed to get rid of the corrosion because if I go between here and here, actually on the capacitor itself, the top of it, so not the pad, I can hear it go in there. And if I go to a ground over, for example, on that there, I can then tap the top of it. So I definitely know they're making a connection now. They were probably making a connection beforehand, but uh, it was quite corroded, so it might not have helped. So I'm just going to pop the batteries back in now and see if it's going to do anything different. Well, let's see if it's going to turn off now. Result. That has actually turned off. Hold on now. Amazing. Right, okay, so let's zoom in here so you can actually see the screen. Well, look at that, it wasn't doing that before, was it? So now what I need to do is I need to see if the left and right's working as well. You know, the left and right over here. So it was the, uh, I can't remember now, was it the left that wasn't working? Wow, so I wonder was it that little capacitor then that was uh, faulty or was it just the general, it could have been those resistors. Remember, it was a little bit bad up by the resistors as well. Yeah, flip's working. Yes, it is working. Look, you just have to line it up correctly. Watch. Can you see it moving across there? Right, so I think I'm just going to give everything a clean up, and then hopefully when I put it back together, it's going to be working all right. So this all feels quite dusty and dirty. I'm going to clean up all those things. I'm going to clean up the case, clean up the LCD, Put it all together and it might work because if you look there you can see all the dust and dirt on that and also I have to clean up the battery compartment as well but what a result just try it one more time you see it's definitely gone off there yeah wow I wasn't actually expecting that to work right happy days let's give it all a good clean up Good clean all around the edges as well. Get rid of all the old dead skin and dirt that's gone in there throughout the years. Just look 
open up this loose port up here. I thought it was a headphone jack, but it looks like it's the power adapter because it's the one furthest away from this uh, volume wheel here. So what I'm going to do is, I can only, it's got like three prongs at the bottom, but yet there's only like two contacts on the inside of it, which is, uh, which looks slightly odd. So I think I'm going to unsolder it just to see if I can work out what's going on with it. Luckily, you can actually buy these off, uh, off eBay, but I think they are around, I think they're about five pounds. But I'm going to unsolder this just to see if this one can be fixed. If I was keeping this for myself, I would just basically solder a wire onto this, hot glue gun this down onto the board, and then it would still make the contact and it would probably work absolutely fine. The problem I've got is I am actually selling this on. And if I do that, and if it's a bit of a dodgy connection, which it could be, then every time the person's gonna knock the lead, if they're not using batteries or knock it with their hand or arm or something, it's gonna just cut out and it will drive somebody mad. So I've actually bought a spare one of these. You get them on eBay there, four pounds 20 UK pounds. So actually quite expensive for what it is, but I think for the heartache it's going to cause somebody by bodging this one up, I'm happy to spend the £4 something to have it fixed correctly, especially because I haven't had to spend any other money on this at the moment. Right, okay, check this out now. I'll put the volume up in a minute. So basically, I changed over the two capacitors, C10 and C11. Didn't make any difference to the speaker. Then I changed over the one that I was slightly worried about earlier on, had a little bit of corrosion, changed that over, and that didn't make any difference. But I started messing around with the speaker then, and I was kind of pulling at it and trying to loosen it up a little bit. And I think what's happened is, I think throughout the years, I think the foam and the cardboard and stuff has just gone hard, so it's not vibrating as well as it should. So what I did is I had these very old, they were only very cheap, rubbishy Alba headphones from years ago, and uh, they weren't working in, in one of the years. Uh, but I'm not bothered because they were useless anyway. But check this out now, I've put the speaker just in here temporarily, and now listen to it, ready? Listen to that. Oh, that is just lovely. <laughs> no crackle, no like static, and a nice bit of volume to it as well. Now, annoyingly, I can't see what, uh, slow that down. I can't see what ohm speaker this is, and it is slightly smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of cut around the plastic to make it the same size as this, because this is a 50, 50 mil one, and if I put it there, you can see it just fits inside here. So I'm gonna cut around the plastic in here, then hopefully it will fit into this housing quite nicely, uh, quite nicely here. But that sounds lovely. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that and then I'm gonna play it for I'm gonna play it for quite a few hours before selling it to make sure it's okay. But to me, there's no comparison between that and the old one. I would hazard a guess that that is probably as good, if not better, than when it first all came out. So I'm gonna run with this one here. So let me get it all sorted, put it back together, and then I'll show you it. Right, okay, so I've got the speaker in here now. I had to make a few cutouts to get around the capacitors and also these little screw hole things here because these are slightly wider and they clip down over on top of it. And I've put some captain tape in just to stop it moving around the place. And now when that goes here, it doesn't go into its original home because the original home was in here, so this is a lot thinner. But the points here are still gonna keep it relatively in place. I mean, I could pack it out more, but it doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be shaking around the place. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Obviously it doesn't look as good as a uh, proper speaker but it's gonna sound a lot better okay so now the part has arrived and you know what it's just as well I got it because I was imagining something like a 3.5 millimeter jack but it's not you can see that it would be an actual socket that goes in there so the male parts in there so my existing one was completely broken so now I'm just gonna solder this back in I'm right there it is now back in its home I'm so glad I got this one because if I bodged up the other one I would have assumed it was gonna be okay and I didn't realize that the internal design was completely different so uh, yeah, I'm really happy that I ended up spending a £4.20, whatever it was, on this one here. Now let's finally give this a nice good clean up here 
and clean the screen so there's no dust or anything and get it all back together. So there we have it, I'm all finished now, just need to sell it. So look at that power adapter, all looks nice. I'm so glad I swapped that over. I can't test it because I haven't got the right power supply and also I can't test this comms links thing here because I haven't got another Atari Lynx to connect it up to. But everything else appears to be working fine. So it flips the screen good, the brightness works, the volume works amazing now and uh, the headphone jack works as well. So listen to that. Sounds so clear compared to how it was before. So all we have to do now is try and sell it. I'm hoping it will sell for a profit, but I don't really know because I had to buy this for £4 something. Although I had the speaker for free, I've still got to put in some money for it because obviously if I was to buy that, it would at least cost £2 or something like that. So I need to put that into it as well. So I didn't have to spend much, about £6 something, but still that eats into it. So we'll have to see whether this thing can actually make a profit or not. So you're going to find out what it made right now. The Atari Lynx has sold, and have I got off to a good start in this competition? Oh, the sweet, sweet feeling of making lots of money on eBay. Oh, this competition has got off to a roaring start. Do you believe me? Of course you don't believe me. Look what the thing sold for. So it sold for £62 with free postage. It needed to make probably over £70 for me to break even. So unfortunately, on this very first item, I have made a loss because it cost me £55 plus £4 for the little power port. Let's call it a pound for the speaker. Postage was just under £5 and then you've got eBay and PayPal fees. So I am well out of pocket on this one. Hopefully I will make it up in the other ones. I don't know, is it because I paid too much for it? Or maybe the buyer who bought this got a bit of a bargain. An Atari Lynx Mark 1 with three games I think £62 is actually quite a good price. Maybe I was too harsh in my listings, I did point out all the faults, didn't point out the positives too much, but I wanted to make sure that the seller knew what they were buying, so I might have done myself uh, out of a bit of money there. But still, if you got any enjoyment from it, please give it a thumbs up, hopefully next week I will do better. And uh, I'm not giving up on the competition yet, I still have high hopes that maybe the others might do worse than me, <laughs> but we'll have to see. Okay, catch you later. Bye now.